Hey everybody, welcome to Matt's Metal Show, and today, September 2nd, we have the new Megadeth album, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. So I'm just going to do a gut reaction video, I got it earlier, downloaded it, I download shit guys, I don't go out and spend 50 bucks on the fucking vinyl. I don't buy the fucking CD. <laughs> I just fucking download it. Uh, less is better, right? You got all these people that are like, dude, you gotta get fucking vinyl, man, because it's so amazing. Uh, cool, man. If you're into vinyl, great. <laughs> people are like, vinyl sounds bad better. No, it doesn't. It actually has less dynamic range than a fucking CD does. And if you're listening to HD digital fucking, uh, it sounds gorgeous. So anyways, but not going to get into that. Whatever you're into, you're into. You want to go spend $50 on the lenticular fucking vinyl Great strawberry splash version that Dave sneezed on. Cool. <laughs> Me, download on my computer, on my fucking hard drive. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so, uh, got it earlier, gave it a listen, and we're just going to go. Boom. Gut reaction, right? Let's get a little fucking uh, do, do, do insight into this motherfucker. Do, 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 do. Wow, crazy. <laughs> do, 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 do. I will tell you, the fucking production sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty fucking good. Do, 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 do. I should have this, like, brought up, but no. Be, me being lazy. Uh. Chris Rakestraw. What the fuck is that? I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Doo, doo, doo. I got the digital edition. It had two bonus tracks. I think we talked about them on one of the shows. Uh, one of them is Police Truck, which is a Dead Kennedys cover. The other one is This Planet's on Fire, Burn in Hell. And it's a Sammy Hagar song. And Sammy Hagar actually guested on that so total album length with the two bonus tracks is uh, 62 minutes and 39 seconds uh, there's a couple other bonus track versions but they just have like live versions of like one has a live version of take no prisoners and the other one has the conjuring live mislabeled as dystopia on the album track listing that's the target exclusive the conjuring which is weird because i thought dave mustaine wasn't doing the conjuring anymore because the lyrics had like how to do a spell a black magic spell because you know dave was a black magic warlock or some shit back in the day so i thought he wasn't doing the conjuring anymore right <laughs> um <laughs> anyway all right so we know uh junior was on this album and then they kicked him to the fucking curb after he was jacking off on the internet for some 19 year old chick um and they replaced his bass parts and steve DiGiorgio, he's the one that um did the bass tracks he like uh Bum, bum, bum. It's from Iced Earth, right? Yeah, and Testament. <clears throat> He's the one that replaced the bass track so they could, like, 
cut Junior or David Ellison completely out of the picture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but James Lomenzo is doing the tour, and I'm assuming he's going to stick in the band for a while this time. Um, you got Kiko on guitar again. You got Dirk Verbuten on uh, drums. And he's fucking a solid fucking awesome drummer. And then, uh, of course, Dave Mustaine, lead vocals, lead and rhythm guitar. So right out of the gate, we get the title track, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Uh, Dave said it's not about COVID. Um, and if you actually like read the lyrics, because I actually brought up the lyrics and listened to the lyrics along with, uh, or read the lyrics along with listening to the album. Um, track just written by Dave himself. Uh, it's about the Black Plague. So it talks about fleas and rats. <laughs> Not fleas the size of rats, sucked on rats the size of cats, 10,000 people had fled Hunger City, right? No Bowie. But uh, it's supposed to be about the Black Plague, right? Uh, the ships, like, you know, the fleas would suck on the rats, the rats had the plague, and then the fleas would suck on the rats, and then they would go bite the people, and then the people would come become infected with uh, the Black Plague. Um <laughs> And it also kind of covers the pocket full of posies, right? Because Dave was like, I guess Dave just figured that out. <laughs> I knew about that when I was a kid. Uh, ring around the rosies, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. It was a fucking plague song. Uh, rosies, because they had rosy cheeks. Um, because they were dying of the fucking plague. A uh, pocket full of posies. They would put flowers in their clothing, in their pockets, because the stench of death was everywhere. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. They would burn the bodies because they didn't know what the fuck to do with all these dead people because there was fucking thousands. Fucking, what, was there millions of dead people? So there was burning people left and right because they didn't know what the fuck to do. But it starts off as, like, bring out your dead... It's all right. Like, it's a cool song. It's nothing, like, stellar. Um, lyrically on this album, Dave's kind of a hit and miss. He's not doing a lot of rhyming. He's kind of just throwing out this weird fucking uh, avant-garde version of fucking lyrics. So it's kind of choppy. Um, eh. You know, but it's my first listen, so I'm not condemning this album in any way, shape, or form. I'm just giving you gut reaction of first listen, listen to it, what I felt right in the moment. Um, kind of like when you're a kid, man. You just bought that album and you popped it on and you're just like, what the fuck? What stands out and what doesn't, right? Uh, the second song is called Life in Hell. It's got a really catchy fucking chorus. I fucking dug that song. It's a fucking good fucking song. Um, super fat. You know, it's life in hell. What are the fucking lyrics? It's fucking classic. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Soldier on. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Dave said he wrote this song about the uh, movie called uh, To Live and Die in L.A. And then it turned out like nothing like the movie. <laughs> the chorus is, I'm a disease and I'm addicted to myself. I'm all I need. I'm going to live and die in hell. Ha! It's a fucking catchy song and I totally fucking dug it. So definitely a gem. <laughs> Do, do, do. Night Stalker's been out for a while. It's got iced tea on it. Um, it's all right. I don't really want to hear iced tea. I really don't. But, you know, if I was listening to a Body Count album, I guess, or just an iced tea album, I would be cool with it. But I really don't want to hear iced tea on a Megadeth album. I really don't want to hear any guests. I really don't. Megadeth should just be Megadeth. Don't, don't do guest shit. Seriously, don't. <laughs> Why? It's fucking Megadeth album. Just make it about Megadeth, right? 
Um, yeah, Night Stalkers. <clears throat> it's all right. Um, Dave said he had to put fucking uh, Ice-T on the album because he was an Army Ranger. He was not. And so I don't know if Dave's delusional or if ice T is just full of shit. But uh, either way, Ice-T was never a fucking Army Ranger. He never did two tours in Afghanistan like Dave was saying. It's kind of funny when they get misquoted and they're just like, Talking out of their ass. <laughs> it's like, but it's just a song about, like, you know, this fucking uh, 160 infantry battle battalion, you know, of Nighthawk helicopters that roll in and fuck shit up. It's cool, but it's not that fucking exciting. So, uh, Dogs of Chernobyl is song number four. Uh, I really wanted to fucking love this song because it starts off creepy. Um, and I guess Dave was watching a bunch of fucking, like, you know, things about Chernobyl, a bunch of fucking documentaries about Chernobyl, and, um, I guess there was one where these kids were, like, they found these dogs, and these dogs basically got abandoned by their owners, because when Chernobyl went into meltdown mode, um, Priapet was the city r right around it, right, and they just fucking got the fuck out of there um except for the poor bastards that were trying to like um put out the fire <laughs> in the fucking reactor and dying like left and right um i wanted to love this song it's kind of like maybe i'll maybe i gotta listen to it more it has these like fucking lyrics though like verse after verse after verse and it's like it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, like a fucking, you know, straightforward thrash song where it's just like jamming and then just do these fucking lyrics towards the end. Um, and then towards the end, too, it just had some creepy fucking, uh, you know, sound effects and stuff. And you could hear the fucking Geiger counter. Some creepy shit. If you watch anything about Chernobyl, uh, it's fucking crazy how that shit went down, and then years later, it was still just sitting there fucking oozing out its fucking radioactive waste, and uh, all the people that were affected by it, and it's fucking crazy, so. I wanted to love it more. It was all right, but I wanted to love it more. Uh, and then you got Sacrifice. Sacrifice is uh, the fifth track. Um... It's all right. <laughs> There's a lot of songs so far that I'm just like, it's all right. <laughs> it didn't blow me away. The skies, the skies on fire, flame rise and shadows fall, cremate, cremate. Uh, it's supposedly about, um, I don't know. Dave has these weird explanations for his songs. He said he... He said he was at like an after hours party in LA and some famous musicians were there. And this one guy who he leaves unnamed, uh, he had these really expensive sunglasses. And for some reason they ended up on the floor and this other guy went over and he stomped on him. And he said, this guy was like the Michael Jordan of guitar players. So obviously the other guy felt threatened by him. And then this song, Sacrifice, was inspired by a song that the guy with the sunglasses wrote many years ago. <laughs> so, I don't know who he's talking about. Um, but the song's okay. It's kind of got like these fucking Dungeons and Dragons kind of lyrics to it. <laughs> it's kind of weird, so... Yeah. What was that? Sacrifice. Then the next song, song number six, was Junkie. Junkie. Dave's still talking about, I guess, I don't know. He's talking about fucking slamming heroin again. Um, Dave's been off heroin for like, what, 30 years now, but still writing songs about being a junkie, which is cool. It's still relevant. There's a bunch of people that are out there that are fucking junkies. So I guess it's fucking still relevant. <laughs> it's just funny because 
It's like, move on, Dave. <laughs> we know you were a junkie. <laughs> but you're not, like, slamming heroin into your cock, right? <laughs> or are you? No. Dave's too feeble now to do that. Um, Dave's voice kind of grew up on this. You know, he did just go through... Uh, Fucking throat cancer, so he, he does sound a little gruff on the album. It's cool. It sounds fucking cool. Um, there's a little blurb. It's a minute and 20 seconds. It's called Psychotherapy, um, and it, it's a fucking cool song, man. It's fucking cool. It's just this little blurb, and he belts out these little fucking lyrics that are just, like, basically, it's like a psychiatrist discussing, like, people's addiction or like you know how psychotherapy could like or people get misdiagnosed and shit i don't know it's a trip but it kind of rolls into killing time and killing time is tight both those songs together is is fucking cool it sounds like old school fucking you know fucking megadeth that's just fucking just sounds so good uh definitely those two songs work together and uh Fuck, man, I love it. I love it! <laughs> Song number nine is called Soldier On! Um, and that's a cool song. Um, I could tell, like, <clears throat> if I hear it a couple more times, I'll probably totally dig that song. It's it's a cool fucking song. It's uh, it sounds like Megadeth though, <laughs> you know. And that's the thing. A lot of these songs, right out of the gate, uh, sound very reminiscent of. Uh, to me, I get that feel, Papa, Papa. I I, I listened to the new Megadeth album came out today, so I'm just doing a quick gut reaction. Megadeth, the sick, the dying, and the dead. I want to see what the cover looks like? Look, that's the cover right there. Uh, the sick, the dying, and the dead. Yeah. Um, this album sounds to me in spots like the world needs a hero. It does. It it feels like that kind of kind of Megadethy feel. So far. So anyways, uh, Soldier On. <clears throat> it's a cool song. Uh, I have a feeling that I'll like it more with each listen. So we shall see. Uh, and then you got Celebritant. Celebritant. Life in hell. Night stalkers. Yeah, that song's all right. Yeah, it's not amazing. It's got iced tea in it. Oh, no. Yeah, we don't really like iced tea. I mean, we like iced tea in Body Count, but not in Black Sabbath. No iced tea in Black Sabbath, and we definitely don't want iced tea in Megadeth. We don't. Can you turn the Logie light on? Because he's all alone out there in the dark. Um... <laughs> There's a song called Celebutant. Um, and I know Dave took exception to some, I don't know, some chick, some little pop star was wearing his, or, or was it a pop star? Or I think it was just a regular chick. Some little chicky was wearing a Megadeth shirt and like, he was like, uh, do you even like Megadeth? And she had like no idea who Megadeth even was. She was just wearing the shirt because she thought it looked cool. And there's a lot of, a lot of people take exception to that. Dude, wear what you're going to wear. Whatever. You paid for it. Who gives a shit? I always see these little kitties out there wearing, like, the Rolling Stones, like, you know, tongue and lips shirt. And you're like, you don't even know who the fuck the Rolling Stones are. So. Um, but I guess, like, yeah. Um... <laughs> But um, according to information, though, this is the song supposed to be about Ingve. 
Dave tells a little story like him and James when they were in Metallica, uh, they went over to Mike Varney's house to meet Ingve, and I guess he wasn't there, but all his cabinets were there, and he had written like six 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 all over his cabinets, and Dave was like, "Oh, we got to meet this guy." Uh, I don't I don't know what this song has anything to do with Ingve, but um, he does talk about name dropping and shit like that, so. I don't know. It's all right. Mission to Mars was Dave got invited down to like Houston to like watch some space shuttle mission or something. And then he took exception to the fact that they got some scientists to go up and blow bubbles on the space shuttle. And uh, so he made a comment. And I guess one of the wives of the astronauts heard him and invited him down for like a space launch or something. He had no idea. It's just a, it's just a song about going to Mars. It's not awesome. It's actually kind of dumb. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Uh, then what do we have? We have We'll Be Back, which is, you know, that was the first single, right? Yeah. The first single, We'll Be Back. Uh, the more I listen to that song, the more I like it. And uh, it's one of the better songs on the album, We'll Be Back. We'll be back. Um, and then you got two bonus tracks. You got the uh, Dead Kennedys song, Police Truck. It's all right. <laughs> it's kind of unnecessary, but it's all right. And then uh, and then you got the uh, This Planet's on Fire, Burn in Hell. It's a Sammy Hagar tune. I've never heard the original, or if I have, I've forgotten about it. But it's actually really good. Uh, Sammy sounds good. <clears throat> it's really, they really mega depthed it up. So it's really like, <laughs> and the lyrics were always kind of satanic. So kudos to Sammy Hagar for that. Um, that actually works. It's actually kind of a cool cover with Sammy in the mix. So, uh, overall, uh, like I said, I just got the album today, so I'm still <clears throat> still working on it, still feeling it out. But I will tell you, Life in Hell is really good. Uh, Psychotherapy that goes into Killing Time is really good. Uh, we'll be back. And uh, This Planet's on Fire, Burning Hell. Those are five out of the 14 tracks that have uh, really caught my attention so far. Otherwise... Lyrically, there's a couple of moments where I'm just like, mm, does that really work? But um, we'll see what happens. So throw up the horns. Everybody stay metal and listen to Megadeth, right? Oh, yeah. Cool.